Hi everybody, it's Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. My current project is working on a 1957 Topps complete set. Um, as I mentioned in previous videos, I had picked up a... I won an auction from Heritage Auctions several weeks ago. Um, it was a 300 card lot. And along with my Dodger team set and some of the Hall of Flame slabs I already... Hall of Fame slabs I already own. Uh, I'm still short about 90 cards, but uh, today I got a, a shipment of cards, which you'll see right here. And these came from uh, Greg Morris cards. If you're a set builder, uh, Greg Morris cards is a great way to build your cards if you're buying cards from eBay. His, his condition is excellent. You know, his cards are excellent. The Mint, VJ to, uh, VG to excellent. And he even has a... Uh, a, a, a poor to good section, like a filler section. If you're building sets, he's really good. I know there are people out there that complain that his prices are too high, but you know what? If you bid right on a 1957 Topps card and you win it for six or seven dollars, that's actually pretty good. So let's take a look and see what I've got. I haven't even seen what I have here, so uh, I'll show you what I got here. First off, we're starting with Ellis Kinder of the Chicago White Sox. I think he might have pitched for the Red Sox at one point. I'm not really sure. Next is Dick Littlefield of the Chicago Cubs. I like the Cubs hats back then. They kind of looked like the, it's almost like the Indians, the Indians, the Cleveland Indians logo, even the Cincinnati Reds logo, their C is just a little different. Next are the Boston Red Sox. Is the Boston Red Sox team cards? The team cards seem to be the cards that I received the less, the least of when I won the Heritage auction. In fact, I didn't win one team card. So I've noticed in my dealings with Greg Morris auctions, is the team cards seem to be a little bit more expensive than just your average common card. And next on the list is Johnny Klippenstein. Klippstein, excuse me. Who I know nothing of, but I love his uniform. Look at the red, the Cincinnati, I should say the Cincinnati Red Legs. Uh, from the Cincinnati Red Legs. Look at those uniforms, that logo on there. That's, that's awesome. You don't see that today. And we've got one more red leg player, and his name is Don Grass. Hopefully it's, um, I should say Don Gross. These cards are not easy to read, just the way they, the way Topps made these cards. The, the name is kind of hard to read, but that's Don Gross. Solly Drake, Chicago Cubs outfielder. I don't know, I don't know much about a lot of these guys, so if I do, I'll be able to speak up, but that's Solly Drake. And the next guy on here is Paul LaPalme from the White Sox. Left-handed pitcher. That, I can't tell you that. And the next card, the Milwaukee Braves team card. The Braves would go on to win the World Championship, the World Series that year. And I always, if, you're, if the team card of the World Champions... I always try to buy two cards, one for the binder, obviously, and the second one I use on the spine of the binder. Uh, that way, when I look at my binders, I see a lot of team cards, and usually, you know, some people will pick uh, a duplicate card they have or someone famous. I usually put the team card of the team that won the World Series that year. So somewhere in that car, in that uh, team picture is Henry Aaron, Eddie Matthews, Warren Spahn, Lou Burdett, a lot of great players. Next guy is Bob Turley, one of the Yankee starters in the 50s. I believe he won 20 games one season. Whitey Ford was the man back then, but he always had a good couple of sidekicks with him during those championship runs of the 50s and early 60s. All right, and now it is Joe, no, make it Ed Bailey. Again, Cincinnati Redlegs. you got to love those uniforms. 
Okay, I know I'm going to botch this guy's name up. From the Baltimore Orioles, Al Polarczyk of the Baltimore Orioles, Al Polarczyk. You see a lot of commons in this, but you'll see some guys that we're going to recognize here, hopefully soon. Next up is Lou Bor Berberet of the Washington Senators. Lou Berberet of the old Washington Senators. The Kansas City A's make a, an appearance here. Mickey McDermott from the Kansas City A's. It's neat to see these guys from the teams that don't exist or from different locations. Case in point, Neil Chrisley of the Washington Senators. These teams just aren't around anymore. They have, or they have different names. They've moved to different locations. All right. Wes Westrom from the New York Giants. Catcher. I remember him more as... Um, he was the second New York Mets manager after Casey Stengel resigned or retired, I should say. Uh, Wes Westrom took over. Didn't have much luck. And I believe at that point, uh, Gil Hodges was brought in. And he led the, the Mets to the World Series in 1969. All right. From the Philadelphia Phillies is one Bob Bowman. I love the poses. Love the poses. Love the uniforms. Love the background shots of the old stadium. Uh, just a different look back then. I know some people don't like the photos of, the, of this set, but personally, I think they're great. All right, Ray Cat of the New York Giants. One thing I noticed here is look at his cap. That, the logo, the NY logo is huge compared to today's standards. Uh, that was the thing that stood out to me in staring at this card. All right, coming in now is Jack Krim, Krimian of the Detroit Tigers. If I have a Tigers fan out there, correct me. Detroit Tigers pitcher. And now we have Dick Hall from the Pittsburgh Pirates, another pitcher. All right, Lou Burdett of the Milwaukee Braves. Along with Warren Spahn, they were the one and two tandem for the Braves. I believe Burdett probably won 20 at one point. He was one of the, along with Spahn, he was their one of their best pitchers. And the team set, the Philadelphia Phillies, the Fighting Phils. I'm assuming somewhere in that card we'll see one Richie Ashburn and also Robin Roberts. From the St. Louis Cardinals, Herm Wemeter from the Cardinals. Not in their traditional red. They looked pretty good, though, in those uniforms. I like those. Hall of Famer Larry Doby. By this point, he had been traded to the White Sox. I think this was the one card um, that I paid the most in my auction. Most of the cards I won from two to four. Some of them were $6. <laughs> the Doby cost me a little bit more, but I still got a good deal on it. <clears throat> so I thought that was a good pickup for this set. Future American League batting champ, Harvey Keene of the Detroit Tigers. I remember him more as the manager of the Milwaukee Brewers uh, in the 80s. Later, I learned about him being traded to the Cleveland Indians for Rocky Calavito, and that brought on the curse of Rocky Calavito that Cleveland Indians fans like to discuss. Next is Jim Rivera of the Chicago White Sox, outfielder. Sox had different type of hats back then. Okay, next is Hal Smith, Kansas City A's catcher. Love the uh, uniforms again. The the, A, the A's or the Athletics didn't have the green and yellow yet. So they had a completely different look at that point. And now is shortstop Daryl Spencer of the New York Giants. Bill Bruton, Milwaukee Braves outfielder. That one's got some snow on it, I just noticed. Jim Lemon, Washington Senators outfielder. 
Uh, Ruben Gomez, New York Giants pitcher. Looks like he just finished throwing the ball in that shot. Paul Smith, Pittsburgh Pirates outfielder. I like that tower in the back. That looks like a radio tower. If there's a Pirates fan out there, explain to me what that is back there. And next is the Kansas City A's team photograph. That's a nice card. Jack Dittmer, Detroit Tigers infielder. And another team card. The Chicago Cubs. A full team picture. By the time we got to the 60s and the 70s, mainly the 70s, they stopped having team pictures and they just had individual photos of guys all put on the same card. It's pretty ugly. Um, some people like that, though. I like this look, though. So there are the Chicago Cubs. Dave Hillman of the Chicago Cubs. Again, with that Cincinnati Reds looking hat. I told you I needed a lot of team uh, cards, so here's another one, the Detroit Tigers team set or team card. And I'm assuming that one Al Kaline and Harvey Keene are probably in, the, in this photo. Okay, one of the other Hall of Famers I was able to pick up was George Kell. By this point, he was on the Baltimore Orioles. I think that was his second or third team of his career by this point. That might be his last card. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Next is Jim Hearn, a Philadelphia Phillies pitcher. And Milt Bowling, Boston Red Sox shortstop. From the Kansas City A's, Vic Power, infielder, outfielder. Love the pose. Love the uniforms, love the cap. Love the photobombed fans in the background. <laughs> it's a good shot. One of my, uh, let's see, what is this? Daryl Johnson of the New York Yankees. I could be wrong here, and I should have done my research before I did this video. I believe he might have gone on to become the manager of the Boston Red Sox. I'm not sure if that's the same Daryl Johnson. This guy is pretty popular in Yankee lore. One Bill Moose Scourin, first baseman for the Yankees, had a great career with the Yankees, but once Joe Pepitone came along, the Yankees felt that they could, uh, that Scourin became expendable, traded him to the Dodgers before the 1963 season. He played one season with the Dodgers, and he won, uh, he won the World Series with them. In fact, he hit a home run against the Yankees in the 1963 World Series. But after that, he seemed a little bit more comfortable in the American League, and the Dodgers traded him to Chicago, to the White Sox, where he finished his career and had a pretty good few more years. I think that's this is one guy the Yankees probably should have held on to. But that's just the way things happened back then. A couple of team photos here. New York Giants. Somewhere in there is Willie Mays. Another team photo, Stan, I was going to say Stan Musial. Stan Musial in the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm assuming it's somewhere in that photo. Stan Musial is in there. Dodger second baseman, Don Zimmer. Played several years for the Dodgers before he went to the Mets in the expansion draft. Later went on to manage the Padres, the Red Sox, became a coach for the Yankees. An all-around baseball lifer, and that was Don Zimmer. Joe Collins, New York Yankees first baseman and outfielder. Didn't get much playing time on that team, I'll say that. One more team card, the Cincinnati Redlegs. I'm assuming that a, young, a very young Frank Robinson is in that photo. The Cincinnati Redlegs, I love that name. And next on the list is Hal Narragon. Narragon. Hal Narragon, catcher for the Cleveland Indians. A lot of players I don't never got to see play or know much about. Granny Hamner of the Philadelphia Phillies is next. And Luis Arroyo, 
Oh, we got a little mix up here. Luis Arroyo from the Pittsburgh Pirates is next. And from the Detroit Tigers, Reno Bert Bertoya, third baseman. And I got just a few more here. Elmer Singleton, Chicago Cubs pitcher. Interesting uh, road unis that the Cubs had back then. They, they flat out put their entire name on there, Chicago Cubs. But then if you look at this uniform of Jim Bodker, his is just a Chicago on it. So Yankees had different uniform, or Yankees, the Cubs had different uniforms at that point. Speaking of the Yankees, Andy Carey, at one point the starting third baseman for the Yankees, had a pretty good career there. I think he was taken out. Eventually, I think I believe Gil McDougal uh, took his spot in the lineup. But Carey played on several championship teams for the Yankees. One more Washington Senator, Ed Fitzgerald. Ed Fitzgerald. Another future Boston manager. But back then, he was still pitching, or he was still a shortstop with the St. Louis Cardinals, and that was Eddie Casco. And next up is Eddie Mixus, Cardinals outfielder. And again, Wendy, Wendy McCall, New York Giants pitcher. And I got one more team photo, and that are the Cleveland Indians. I'm assuming Bob Feller is gone at that point because he would have retired at the end of the 56 season. But there are the Cleveland Indians. And the very last card, I didn't know he, this gentleman was a baseball player until a couple, about a year ago. Ernie Johnson of the Milwaukee Braves. I knew Ernie Johnson growing up with cable television in the 80s as the lead announcer of the Atlanta Braves, along with uh, Skip Carey. That's how I knew him. I didn't realize Ernie was a baseball player until, like I said, about a year ago. Um, I don't know much about his, his baseball career, but I did love him as an announcer. I thought he was great. And obviously, in today's world, we all know him as the father of Ernie Johnson Jr., the NBA on TNT announcer. So that is my pickup for today. I picked up about 60 cards for my 1957 set. Uh, I'm down to about 30 cards to finish. Uh, got some big cards in there that I need to finish, that I need to finish the set though, like Mantle and Maze. Um, so it's going to take a little while, but it's a fun set to work on. And I hope you enjoy taking a look. Let me know what you think, guys. Have a great day. Take care.